but then how do you make sense of the fact that you know he was a just man everything that we know about him how would it make sense that he would marry um, Aisha uh, who at the time was pretty much a child how do you sort of rationalize and make sense of that there, there are several points to be, make about this uh, one is that uh, you you cannot uh, take an individual from past history and expect that that individual will adhere to all um, of our modern uh, senses uh, mm -hmm. because senses develop and change over time we learn from history we, we develop certain uh, awarenesses that was not there in the minds uh, awarenesses that were not uh, uh, there in the minds of people before us so if you go back and uh, examine all of the great political figures or historical uh, um, sages and uh, holy men uh, founders of great religions uh, they will not measure up to the high standards that we have in our modern uh, time so it would not be fair to them now in many ancient societies uh, girls got married very young and um, uh, that was for a good purpose so for on the one hand they did not have high schools and colleges to attend uh, and the, uh, one of the great contributions they made to their tribes to their people was to uh, become the mothers of many children so they got married young they had children uh, the children made the tribe uh, uh, stronger if she gave birth to sons the sons were there as warriors to defend uh, the tribe and so on uh, so young marriage was actually um, a, a service to their communities and to their people it was also for their protection because in ancient societies if a girl was not married it is more likely that she might be seen as a target uh, for mm -hmm. molestation by others who see her as somewhat like being available or unprotected but once she was married and that's one of the uh, signals that the marriage ring uh, uh, sent out uh, you know this girl is uh, in a way taken mm -hmm. that, that's how people viewed it at the time um, and and so uh, nowadays of course we have modern laws to yeah. protect women from uh, abuse and so on and yet we saw especially in the area the grand uh, um, uh, situation that um, you know the laws are not enough to protect women we, we have to change the mindset of men so that they do not see women as targets mm -hmm. uh, for their own uh, sexual pleasure uh, but in any case the, the past societies uh, uh, made it necessary for, for this to happen and or at least we can see that that was one of the solutions to some of their problems so that that's that's the point but uh, at the same time we should not uh, accept without critical investigation the simple declaration that Aisha was as young as some of the narratives in our traditions uh, indicate uh, because on the one hand we we can see that the age of the first wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was exaggerated, higher, mm -hmm. um, so that she's said to be 40 when she married the Prophet, peace be upon him, though we know that she bore uh, some children for him, four mm -hmm. daughters who survived uh, her, and uh, also uh, some sons who died in their infancy. So if she had like uh, about six children uh, or seven after she was 40 years old, if she got married at 40 and then by 41 she's having children one after another she must be having children close to, to 50 mm -hmm. and this seems unusual so what is more likely is that as Lawrence Conrad pointed out probably she was 28 at the time when she got married to the prophet who was also uh, in his mid-twenties he was 25 uh, so her age apparently got exaggerated towards the higher end and it may have been the case that Aisha's age mm -hmm. um, got exaggerated downward she was young probably okay. in her teens uh, and and as people told and retold the story of how young she was they exaggerated her age uh, downwards